Hi and welcome. Today we're looking at direct selections and we're going to be looking at the freeform lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool and how to make selections with them in Photoshop. My name's Ken Fisher and this is Live Link Training. Selections are really important when we're working on digital images. And we're not limited to rectangular or elliptical selections. We've got other ways of making selections as well. And one of these is the lasso tools. Now if we go up here in the toolbar, the third tool down, if we click and hold on that, we'll see that we've got an option for three tools. We've got the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. Okay, let's start with the lasso tool. Now this is a freeform tool, it's just like drawing with a pencil. It's really great for making freeform or really non-standard selections. And we do that by we just click the left mouse button down and we draw. And we can be as creative as we like, drawing whatever shape we like. But what we've got to do in the end is get back to where we started or very close to it. And then as we let go, it will connect and it will make us a selection. And you can see we've made a selection because we've got the marching ants here. Little line of ants marching all the way around the outside. This is what they call a selection. We've selected part of the image. Now if you change your mind or you think it's not the right selection, then we can deselect that selection. And we do that up in the select menu and deselect. And we've got a keyboard shortcut of Control and D on the Windows machine, which is the one I'm on, or Command and D if you're on a Mac. So if I want to deselect that, I just click and off it goes. And then I can draw another one. And there we go. Now something to understand about selections is they define two states that pixels can be in an image. And they can be inside the selection here, and this is called selected. So all these pixels in here are selected. And anything that's outside here, these are not selected. And Photoshop will only let you go further on things that are within the selection. So I'll just show you what I mean by that. I'll just pick a paintbrush and I'll pick a pretty bright colour so you can see it. A nice decent sized paintbrush. And then I'll start painting. And you can see up here, because I'm not in the selection, nothing's happening. But as soon as I cross over that selection, you'll see anywhere inside this selection, I can paint. But anywhere outside the selection, it protects it. And it won't let me paint outside that selection. Get rid of all that lot. And then I'll Control and D to get rid of that. OK, let's have a look at the next tool. And this one is called the Polygonal Lasso Tool. Now this one works differently. Where with the, the Lasso Tool, you the Freeform Lasso Tool, you basically just click and you drag and you draw, just like a pencil. With this one, we click and let go. And we're basically laying down points. I'm going to click with my left mouse button and let go. And then if I move the mouse, you can see I've got like an elastic band now. So I've now laid one point down. So if I click again and let go, I'll let another point down, click again and let go. So I'm constantly just putting points down. And then eventually we get back to where we started to create the selection. But what happens if you've got a point in the wrong place? So let's say I've accidentally clicked over here and I go, oh no, that's not what I wanted. I can't back click myself. I can't go and unclick that point by clicking on it. What I've got to do is to delete that point. And we do that with the backspace key. So if I just press the backspace key once, you'll see it'll take off that point that I did wrong. And if I've done two points wrong, I can just keep clicking and using the backspace key to get me back to a position where I know the point is correct. And then I can just complete my selection and go right over where I started. You'll see that little zero appear. That means I'm right over where I started and then click to complete the selection. 
Again, once we've made a selection, I can't go and change the points. So if I've really made a mess of it and you want to change things, again, go back up to Select and Deselect, or use Control and D, and that will deselect the selection that you've made. OK, next, we've got the Magnetic Lasso tool. And for this one, I'll just have to show you a different image. We'll have a look at this one. Now, the Magnetic Lasso tool is an edge selection tool that detects an image's edges and automatically selects the pixels around them. Now, selections are free hand, but with assistance from Photoshop. Now, this gives it quite a high degree of precision, particularly if there's plenty of contrast. If there isn't any contrast or there's little contrast, it, it sometimes it will fail pretty badly. Now, again, it's different in how it works. So you can see the, the cursor I've got is a little magnet. And what I've got to do is, is click near or on an edge that I want. And I'm just going to click once and then let go of my mouse button. And you'll see I've got like a, it's like a little piece of electric. And, and all I'm doing now is I'm not clicking, I'm not clicking and dragging. I'm just following the edge of this contrast. So all I'm doing is now moving my mouse. I'm not clicking or doing anything. And what Photoshop's doing is looking for the contrast and it can find it. And so what it's doing is going along and it puts points at everywhere that it thinks there is a nice contrasty edge. And once you've used it a few times, you, you do get quite quite quick with it. So I'll just do a quick one here. We'll go right round this corner. Now there are places where you may not get such good contrast, and in these cases the tool will fail pretty abysmally. So let's get up here and we'll see what it does as these as the edge of this pea pod light fades into the white background. It'll start going wrong, I think. I'll just oh there it goes. Yes, it's gone wrong a little bit there. So I can't back click myself out of trouble. But what I can do is just let go of the mouse and I can again, as with the other tools, I can hit the backspace key. And I can delete the points until I get back to one that I think is OK. And then I keep going again. And what you can do is if you get to a point where it's consistently um, not playing ball, you can eyeball where you think a point needs to be and you can just click and lay a point down. So in these areas where it's not going to get it right, I can I can make sure that it gets it right by clicking the points. And I can just, whoops, gone wrong again. So again, backspace key a couple of times, get it back to there. No, need to go back again, get it back to there. And then I've got to really to guide it through this last part by clicking and it's gone wrong again. See, it's really, really finickety this if you don't have a lot of contrast. And then I can go around the outside and yeah, I've not been a good job of that, but back to where you started and click to make uh, the selection. And you can see that doesn't look bad apart from that ropey bit at the top here. Uh, but, but that's not a bad selection because there is contrast. There's a nice contrast between the green of the pea pod and the white of the background. And this tool will make, make these kind of selections really quick and really efficient for you. And a lot of the time, it's about knowing which tool to use. There is, there is very rarely one time when you will use one tool to make a complete selection. It's a case of saying, well, I can make the biggest part of this selection with this tool, and then I can just refine the selection and add some other pieces with one of the other tools. So a quick recap. The direct selection tools. We've got the lasso tool where we want to do freeform selections. We've got the polygonal lasso tool where we've got regular straight edge selections. And we've got the magnetic lasso tool, which has got edge detection built in for where you've got plenty of contrast. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. There is a free ebook to accompany the video, which you can download from the website. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments underneath the video. If you like the video, please share it with a friend or two and click the subscribe button. So when I upload a new video, you are the first to know. Thanks for watching 
I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.